Hey boys and girls, it's reading, writing, and language time. So again, I'm gonna send you a ton of things, but it's just because I'm sending you extra to do for the weekend. So to start off, I'm gonna have our little book response. Again, I'm gonna let you choose what book you would like to read. Next week, I think I'm gonna start maybe searching for some books to see if you can listen to some online. If you would like, if not, choose your own book. It's up to you. But our first response is going to be a summary of the story. And what it looks like, is you're gonna write the characters here, the people in the story or the animals or things that have talking voices and main parts, the setting, when or where story takes place, and then tell me what happened first, next, and last. Make sure you use complete sentences. And remember, give me the big ideas of the book. Not necessarily the small details. I want to know the big thing that happened first, next, and last. It's similar to the beginning, middle, and end. All right, our next book response is going to be for a non-fiction book. Who remembers what a non-fiction book means? Very good. It means a real book, not fake. So this is going to be a book maybe about facts that you learned, an informational text. So this one is going to be, give me two facts that you learned, actually three facts. One by the star, two by the spaceship, three by the alien. Three facts that you learned from your book that you read. If you need help finding an informational text, there are plenty on Raz Kids, the website I gave you, and you can choose from whatever book that you would like on there. Some of them are really interesting to read. But go ahead and make sure you write your fact in a complete sentence as well. All right, next on our list is going back to our phonics skill for this week. And our phonics skill for this week is the long O sound. O-A and O-W or O with the magic E. Okay, so Miss Bowden is going to give you a few reading practices for the comprehension pages. And so yesterday I gave you the OA comprehension page with the questions at the bottom of it. Today I'm gonna to give you an OW. Remember, OW says O. So I would like you in this story, you have four multiple choice questions on here. I would like you, again in crayon, to underline or circle any words with the O sound spelled O-W. And then don't forget your answers. Whatever answer you put, make sure you find it in your story and underline it to make it match. Now over here, I'm giving you another O-W passage, but this time you have questions where you have to actually find it in your story, underline it, and write your answers in complete sentences. So I've got one for O-W, I've got one for O-A, and I've got one for the magic E. So I've got three of them I'm sending over to you for the weekend for extra practice for that long O sound. Make sure you find your answers in the story. Underline them and write them in complete sentences. Starts with a capital letter, ends with a stop sign. All right, to go along with our phonics practice, we've got some more phonics worksheets. These are the fun ones that you guys like. I've got OA and OW where you read the words and cut and glue the picture to match the word. So that's gonna be our first phonics practice for both OA and OW. I also have a, I love to read and circle the word. So you're gonna read the sentence in this one and match the picture that matches the sentence with what they're doing. And then to circle the word, you need to make sure that you're spelling it correctly and look at the picture and circle the word that is spelled correctly using the OA or the OW. Remember, sometimes our, font, our spelling comes later. Some of these simple words, we're gonna know how to spell really quickly. But as long as we're phonetically correct, Miss Bowden is very happy with that. And then our last phonics practice is going to be 
one of the sentences where you have to fill, read it and fill in the blanks with one of the words. Remember, my strategy that I taught you was to read the sentence and try that sentence with every word in it to see which one makes sense. So the first one is on OA and the other page is on OW. Lots and lots of good phonics practice to help us with spelling, to help us with reading these bigger words. Okay, now here comes the fun activity that Ms. Bowden's gonna be giving you. I am going to be giving you one of like our little stations for you to do. So it's called Digging Up Words. I'm gonna give you the instruction page. But remember Ms. Bowden used to give you a big word and said that you can make a lot of small words out of it? So we did St. Patrick's the other day in class to see how many words you can make. Well, today we're gonna do the word springtime. So here's the page where you can actually cut the letters out and rearrange them yourself if you would like to. But Miss Bowden is gonna give you another page to see how many two letter words you can make, three letter words, four letter words, or five or more letter words out of the word springtime. If you can fill up this page, that is amazing. See if you can go on the back and write more words with it. There are tons of words you can make out of the word springtime. Okay, our next station that I'm gonna give you, it's called match up prepositions. Now, we don't know that word prepositions. That's a really big word. So what Ms. Bowden is just gonna give you is new instructions for this, okay? So, basically, I want you to match one of the beginning cards, beginning part of a sentence, to one of the ending parts of the sentence. So, for example, I'm going to have some cards that have sentence starters, and I want you to find the ending of the sentence for it to make sense. So, you're basically just going to build Miss Bowden a sentence. So there's a ton that you can cut out and do. And to go along with these sentences, to make sure they make sense, each beginning of the card, what it talks about, has got a picture to match with the ending card. So you can print out the pictures too to help you figure out these words, or just look at the pictures, or you don't need to use the pictures at all. But Miss Bowden's got that just so you can match it up. But once you match up your beginning, of your sentence and your ending of your sentence, I've got a page for you to write the entire sentence correctly on the line. Make a brain, make a sentence with the two parts, the beginning part and the ending part. So you're gonna have the who, the noun you're talking about in the sentence, and then you're gonna have the verb, the action, what they are doing at the end of the sentence. And when you put it together, you have your whole sentence. So you're gonna, eventually write that whole sentence with your capital letter and end it with a stop sign on that paper. Not worried about you worrying about that word preposition. That's a big word and that word will come later on in your second grade class. I just wanna make sure that you can put together a sentence that makes sense. Should be quite easy and fun. Okay, our next activity is kind of like a science activity mixed with a writing activity. I want you guys to explore the word spring and learn all about our season spring. Remember, we have four seasons in a year. Can you think of all of them? Summer, fall, winter, and spring, all four of them. Well, we just came out of winter and now we're going into the season of spring. So on this, it's kind of like a research, what you're gonna do. They've got some questions for you to answer and research about spring. We've got what spring is, what do we wear in spring, all about spring plants and spring animals. So Ms. Bowden's gonna try to find some videos to post later on for you guys to watch to learn a little bit about spring, but maybe you can go exploring around your yard to figure out these answers on your own. So that's gonna be a cool little science thing. Ms. Bowden's gonna get some videos going on. But again, as some review, 
This is all extra because it's the weekend coming up. Compound words. Remember, compound words are one big word that is made up of two smaller words and you can separate them. So they give you the first part of the compound word and you need to finish that rest of that compound word with one of these on the side to make it make sense. Find those spring words in there. Okay, we got one more thing Ms. Bowden's gonna send you and it is going to be how to grow a flower writing. We've already written about how to grow a bean plant, so I think it might be quite similar to what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna send you two pages. Now, one page has got pictures and writings, and the other one is our basic writing paper. So what Ms. Bowden would love for you to do is I would love for you to maybe use this page to as your thinking map and think about what did we do first, next, then, and last. I know they don't have four spaces on there, but maybe use the back of it for your fourth space. And if you don't have enough room to write, use another sheet of paper to finish your writing and then draw me a picture of how to plant a flower. Remember, in our writings, we want to have an opening sentence. Bring your readers in with maybe a nice question. Do you know how to grow a flower? I do, let me tell you how. Or just a simple statement of, I can grow a flower. And then you do your writing. Or let me tell you how to plant a flower. Those are all great ideas for your sentence starters, your opening sentence. Then you need to write a sentence telling me first, another one with next, another one with then, and then either last or finally. And at the end of it, have your closing sentence saying, now it's your turn to grow a flower. Can you grow a flower? How cool is it to grow a flower? That's how you grow a flower. It's really fun. Any type of ending sentence that you would like. So those are all of our reading activities that Ms. Bowden's gonna give you for today and the weekend. Remember, I'm giving you a lot because we got a long weekend and I'm just giving you some extra work in case you want to do stuff over the weekend since we just started with some of these worksheets. So have a great weekend and have fun with your science and your reading and writing and language activities. If you have any questions, please feel free to text me, call me, email me. Can't wait to see y'all for our Zoom this afternoon. Bye.